Hi everyone, my name is Trenton Brendel and I am a graduate student pursuing a doctoral degree in optical engineering at the Wyant College of Optical Sciences. Um, today I'm going to be teaching you about um, single lens reflex cameras and photographic lenses. In my spare time I spend a lot of time with cameras um, doing videography and still photography um, both of landscapes and portraits. And this is something that I'm particularly passionate about and I'm excited to teach you about this wonderful world of photographic sciences today. There are many types of single lens reflex cameras. Here we see a film camera that uses a sensitive film to capture light from the scene. We also have digital single lens reflex cameras which use CMOS or CCD sensors to capture light. This digital single lens reflex camera is currently using a 50 millimeter focal length lens at f2.8 with a lamp on top to illuminate the scene. Now we'll move on to talking about photographic lenses which are used to focus light on the sensor. Here we have a 14 millimeter f2.8 wide angle lens. I primarily use this lens for astrophotography thanks to its wide field of view and superior light collection abilities. This lens has a manual aperture adjustment ring. You can see as we rotate the ring that the pupil gets smaller. Here we're closing the aperture stop down to limit the amount of light that enters the lens. This is useful for increasing the depth of field and also limiting the brightness of the scene. Now we'll look at a 17 to 40 millimeter wide angle zoom lens. This lens, unlike the 14 millimeter prime lens, has a variable zoom, meaning the field of view is adjustable. You can see here as we zoom the lens that the field of view of this objective changes, as evidenced by the change in the size of the pupil. And from the back, we also see that the rear elements move as the zoom ring is adjusted. This lens may be used with automatic focus or manual focus, where we may adjust the focus ring to different distances according to which object we're trying to focus on. Next, we'll look at a 24 to 105 millimeter f4 lens. This is an all-around workhorse lens. It's used for all sorts of shooting. You can see I've gotten plenty of use out of it given the gashes on the front. This lens covers a wide range of zooms, making it useful in a wide variety of situations. For many casual photographers, this may be the only lens required to take great photographs. Much like the 17 to 40 millimeter lens, this lens also has the capability to be manually or automatically focused. This lens also boasts image stabilization within the lens itself, which is extremely useful when shooting video or shooting handheld at slow shutter speeds. Finally, we will look at the 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 telephoto zoom lens. This lens is regarded by many professional photographers as one of the best lenses on the market, given its versatility, its exceptional light collection capabilities, and its optimal zoom range for all sorts of different shooting environments. In order to achieve such a fast focal ratio on a lens with such a long focal length, the diameter of the elements has to be quite large. This makes the lens rather heavy and is not super fun to carry around on a long day hike, but the photos that can be captured with this beast are worth it. Not only photos, but video too looks phenomenal when shooting with this lens. The long focal length and large aperture make this lens ideal for achieving beautiful bokeh effects and very shallow depth of field, which is optimal for isolating the subject from the background. This lens also has exceptional image stabilization which is critical 
for such a long focal length when shooting handheld. Now we'll see an example of how a single lens reflex camera operates. Here we have three film cameras. The leftmost camera is currently set to the bulb shooting mode. By removing the lens, we can watch the mirror flip upwards, exposing the film and covering the viewfinder. As we release the shutter, the mirror flips back downwards to allow a clear view from the viewfinder through the objective. Photographers also use many other accessories when capturing photographs. Here, we see a flash, which is used to illuminate the scene, a microphone used to record audio, and an SD card, which stores images and video files for later editing. Finally, we'll take a closer look at what the aperture stop looks like as it changes in size. The aperture stop determines the size of the on-axis ray bundle that travels through the optical system, which in turn defines the amount of light on the sensor. I hope you have enjoyed this brief introduction to the single lens reflex camera and photographic imaging lenses. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching.